There we go. Hello. Hi. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. How are you? Uh, you know, just taking each day as it is right now. <laughs> I know. I think we all are. It's crazy. Yeah, I it's uh. <laughs> still feel like I'm in a movie that I still haven't woken up from, or like <laughs> in a movie, like in a movie theater, or like dreaming still. Yeah, that's how I feel. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's just like a crazy, crazy time, and we're just all just coping the best that we can. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I want to ask you first, like, how's it just been for you? Because we've been what? It's I mean we haven't been locked up, locked up now recently, but yeah, really all of April and May was kind of mm -hmm. like staying in. So how was it for you, just? Ugh. not being able to do stuff <laughs> yeah i think it's actually hitting me more now than it did yeah. initially um now i'm kind of getting cabin fever we don't go out much <laughs> yeah still you know just because like i don't know it's just doesn't it still doesn't seem safe enough to do so yeah. so um yeah uh i think like when it first started it, it seemed very surreal and um it actually made me think a lot about, uh, this is actually what happens when people, this is trauma, right? This is collective yeah. trauma that we're experiencing. Mm -hmm. So from everything that I've learned over the last two and a half years about trauma and uh, you know, uh, pretty standard coping is one of them is disassociation yeah. or denial. And yeah. I think that, so you either swing on or the other uh, response is, um, Oh, what is it? It's when you become um, over, oh my gosh. It's basically when you're not paranoid, but like uh, you, you're, oh my God, I, I can't think of the word right now. It's right okay. there, but so yeah. It's, you... the, it's the, the polar opposite. <laughs> like you, you block yourself away. You try to figure out like ways to keep yourself safe or you're yeah. in complete denial and you disassociate. So I think that for some of us, even though we know and we're being told that we're in a pandemic, mm -hmm. I think it's hard for a lot of people to accept that as the reality. If that yep. makes sense, no, know? I agree with you hundred so. percent. And it's crazy because I was living in LA um, mm -hmm. last year and I think I had it in December. Oh, really? I went to the doctor three times. They couldn't tell me nothing. Wow. I lost almost 30 pounds in two weeks. I wasn't eating wow. all of December. Um, I had the chills body aches, fever, and the doctor were like, oh, you just have the quick bug. I was like, uh, I don't know any bug that's over a month long. Yeah. Like, wow, did you have a cough? I had a cough, horrible yeah. sore throat, yeah. coughing constantly. Yeah. All I ate was chicken broth and um, tea with honey. Wow. To soothe my throat. Yeah. When I lost the weight, I was excited. I was like, oh, this is great. But internally, I felt horrible, but it was... Yeah. Like, and that was December, but that's before it really hit America. So sure. no one really knew. I, I was just reading about, you know, China and then like yeah. Europe, but nothing really hit, you know, right. but I think it was here, but we just didn't know. Cause. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I went to three I different doctors. In January. And, did you? Okay. Yeah. I think yeah, I had I think... it in January. It was after I went to SeaWorld with my family. Uh-huh. And um, yeah, I couldn't kick it. <laughs> I was coughing like crazy. Yes. Horrible sore throat, tough time breathing, and I, yeah. I have asthma, so technically I oh, have so an it's... underlying, yeah. Yeah, yeah, my uh, chest was killing me. Yeah, so, yeah. I don't know, it's, whew. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. crazy, <laughs> it, it's crazy, it was crazy, but I mean, I'm happy, if we both did have it, we're good, and hopefully we're, we're good forever with it, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, I want to go all hopefully. the way back from, <laughs> yeah, hopefully. But, um, you know, childhood days for you, <laughs> you know, growing up, yeah. what age did you know, like, you wanted to get into the industry? Because you were relatively young when... Very you young. Got, yeah, you were yeah. really young. We, I was 12 years old when um, we got signed with, I guess, the first production company, I guess you could say, uh -huh. it was before Bad Boy and all that. I was 12. Um, it's crazy. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, uh, I knew right away. I mean, since I was four, three, four years old, I would, I was, I, that I wanted to specifically be a singer. Yeah. So um, that's all I did was sing. I wanted to perform for people. My dad uh, has told me stories about, I guess, me performing for old ladies in like <laughs> grocery lines and just wanting to sing and perform. So 
Um, I knew that I was a performer since, you know, as for as long as I can remember. Um, I was, I was certain that there was no other path for me. So that's awesome. So you knew yeah. right away. Yeah. Well, how did, did you, how did you meet? Like, cause I know at first it was you, hold on, who, you, Ashley, Holly, mm -hmm. and there was another member before Diana. Yes, it was, it was actually five of us. It was five of you. Okay. It was five of us. Um, it was Alex Chester, Holly, Ashley, mm -hmm. me, and then another girl. I don't even remember her name. Because all we had, yeah. I think we met with her once, and then I don't know what happened. Her parents said no, and then it was the four of us at that point. Yeah. Yeah. And then Diana came in later. Yeah, that's great. Like, what, like, did you think it was going to explode as quick as it did? Because literally, once Diana joined, I mean, pandemonium happened for you all yeah like, um well we at that point had already been signed and we had already been uh in the recording studio for quite some time so yeah it didn't feel and again uh forgive me i was about 14 so like my idea uh -huh. of like something being fast where you know when you're a kid everything feels yeah like you don't takes realize forever, right <laughs> like uh <-huh. laughs> oh god all i want to do is you know go to the sixth grade and it's when i want to get older so it didn't feel to me like it was fast. Um, and also because I had done a lot of musical theater. I had, I was, I was an actor. I was a kid actor, child actor. Uh -huh. So I had paid my dues. I, I, I feel like <laughs> young age. <laughs> but, um, it, but for me, it wasn't a, um, you know, instant success. It didn't feel like mm -hmm. that because I had been doing it for so long. At least it felt so. I uh, felt that way. Um, but uh yeah it was uh, it, it was fairly shortly after diana jumped on that i do feel like it went quickly it's kind of a blur actually <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah like you know he loves you now comes out that's before mm -hmm. what was it 2000 because that's before the album came out i know because the album was at, like the top of 2001 i think yeah but um january yeah i think it was january yeah january 2001 so how was it just like having that song explode. And that's when the budgets were amazing. That's when, yeah. I mean, really, you got to witness a perfect time to be a superstar because if I ever wanted to be a singer, I wouldn't even want to be a singer today because you know, it's really? nothing. I feel like it's nothing compared to what, what it was the late then. 90s, 2000s, really. Yeah. Like, that's when you did, like, promo tours and you went yeah. to every radio station and you did the radio station performances and you mm -hmm. opened up for huge stars and you did your own tours and mm -hmm. the budgets for videos were there. Yeah. You, you may not have made tons of money, but you got the great exposure. I feel that today it's hard. I feel not, yeah. not that it's not, but I feel like it's less of a chance. I feel then it's before. different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it was the first time I heard he loves you not was because FM super I think that was the first time I had heard it. It was super exciting. Um I remember they did a lot of um uh, street team work where there was posters, just post like posters of us yeah. just all over Los Angeles. That I remember and feeling super excited because we'd see these posters of our group everywhere on the way <laughs> to the studio. Yeah. That was surreal. Um yeah um I kind of in my gut knew that dream was going to go somewhere. And I'm not a big believer in like manifesting stuff because yeah. I feel like even now, if I try to manifest stuff, I don't, it doesn't manifest. So I don't know, <laughs> but um, uh, I don't know. I maybe it was just the belief and knowing or believing that much that we were going to be big that, yeah. I don't know. I, I can't say that I was part of, <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, but you know, how was it like, I, I'm happy I made it on TRL before the new TRL, like the old, like the original. Yeah. How was it being on TRL? And like, you've got to host it, I know at times. Yeah. And then you sort of guests on there. And then you've yeah. got to like, when the TRL tour was announced, all of you were there. Like, I wish I was in that audience that day because <laughs> that was monumental. I feel like it's never happened again with that many big artist at one time on one tour. Yeah, like, if that was, a, a, I loved that tour. That was so much fun. So many great artists. Um, yeah, going to TRL, I mean, that was 
exciting every single time it felt yeah. like home base you know but also yeah. we were the same age as our consumer as our fans mm -hmm. so um i think that we experienced it differently than even like some of the adults like the adult <laughs> artists it feels so weird <laughs> to be talking like as an adult like you know but um yeah so for us we had a very childlike sort of um idea of what trl was like and I don't know, it was, uh, I think that that was also part of it. I mean, it was so much fun, but uh, yeah. we had no idea about the business side of things and how things worked and um, and all of that, so. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I want to ask you too, like how many tours did you, because I remember I went to the TRL tour, mm -hmm. I seen you all on, and I remember going to the 90 Degrees uh, Revelation tour. Oh, yeah. It was like you, Baja Man, and Devila Morgan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy I remember that, but uh, I just have a good memory. That um, was awesome, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Have you ever interviewed her? No, I tell you the truth. I was about to, I was interested in like looking her up because. Yeah. I, I haven't. Know where she went. Yeah, she just kind of disappeared. I, but I she had an amazing voice. Yeah. Like, and she had, a, I remember her her show that day and it was awesome. But who else? And I also remember you. I didn't actually go to this show, mm -hmm. but I have a VHS of it. They sold the year after. Okay. At the B96 Summer Bash, and you performed like 50,000 people in this. I think it was like a huge uh, racetrack. It was like you. Who was it? It was Dream. I think Ricky Martin. <laughs> a ATC. That song, All Around the World, I remember. They were on there. Like, how, what was one of your favorites? And who did you all like perform, like open up with or co headline with? Because I remember those three shows specifically. Yeah, no, we toured with NSYNC a ton. More than, any okay. other, more than any other artist. So we were on their No Strings Attached Tour, Pop Odyssey Tour. So that one was their stadium tour. So we did like yeah, a giant a stadium one. and all the stadiums across the country. Um, that was one of my most memorable uh, yeah. experiences, I think, or tours that I remember. We toured with Britney Spears. That's actually how me and my husband first met, but didn't yeah. start dating. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was the first tour we ever opened for, and we were on the B stage. We weren't even on the main stage. We weren't on, not even officially. No, we were on That's until crazy. the B stage. So we were like the little snack. Is like people were yeah. walking in, like, and the B stage was typically you know pretty standard, like festival looking yeah. stage somewhere on the property, <laughs> you know. And sometimes they were in. Uh, areas that were like people didn't even know there was a stage there so oftentimes yeah. when we were doing our sound check we'd be like singing to get people to <laughs> 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 show over here a little free show um yes um oh. <laughs> yeah we uh britney spears we did a lot of radio shows um I feel like we did spot dates with Christina Aguilera, Jessica Simpson. Um, it was basically everybody. I mean, it, it was the yeah. whole circuit, you know. Um, there were a few artists that we didn't ever tour with or oh. perform with, which I'm grateful for now looking back. Um, yeah. It, I don't know how that never that, – that, yeah, so it's very interesting. But Yeah, because yeah, like you said, everyone usually opened up some way, somehow. Even yeah. if it wasn't a full mm -hmm. tour, it was like yeah. spot dates you would fill in. Because yep. I remember like at times people had like different openers and different, like you do the first leg, some people do like the middle of the leg, and then some artists do like the end of the leg to the openers of a major act. So right. yeah, I understand that. But um, like how was it at that time? Because that's before, like I think about it that time because I felt like everyone was untouchable at that time. And mm -hmm. there wasn't social media. So you really didn't know anything we just seen you all on tv or on stage right. like do you think it would be t like really different if social media was around because i feel like oh totally now yeah absolutely like we would have had more control um that's one of the things that i feel like um you know we certainly didn't have that artists have now is more con you're not reliant on an entire team of people yeah to control your social media or to honestly you have more control over your branding or uh the way that people see you there was there was a lot of um back then um gosh what is it uh uh typing 
like being yeah. tight, tight cast, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, you put in a box, kind of. You're just yeah. This and is your path as, I, as I got older, I had a hard time breaking from that. Um, yeah. Because I really, I, I, it became a kind of a persona, a certain to a certain mm -hmm. extent, like my role in the group, and and also, also like kind of what was um, communicated. Um, you know, to us, uh, as, as far as what our roles were. And then, and it was at such a time, uh, you know, as far as just like growing up and kind of what that does to you mentally and emotionally and, and from that, um, it took me some time, a long time to, uh, really kind of break from what I felt like people like believed who I was or yeah. that, that was like a real true, like authentic. And it was, but it was mm -hmm. a, a very small, portion of yeah who i am um so um yeah sorry i'm rambling a bit <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no you're well no you know you did like you said you did the first album you did like you said tons of touring mm -hmm. tons of exposure i mean you're on everything like trl regis and kelly i mean yeah. rosie o'donnell show the list yeah. goes on you're on every, every award show like right. the life was good i feel at that time for anyone in the music industry it was least. very fun yeah, I mean, it was just like a dream. It really yeah. was a dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, um, totally. you know, when you stepped away from dream, were you nervous or ever like, uh, like, because, you know, you're so used to having, you know, mm -hmm. a group with you. Like they say, everyone I know that been in a group, they're like, oh, what's well, great because you have them to back you up. You know, if you forget a lyric, if you get a dance step, they're yeah. there for you. And yeah. now you're stepping out, you know, on your own. Sure. How was it for you? Just, at, and you were young still. I was very young. I, I left, I think, right before I turned 18. And um, yeah. it was because I didn't want to be tied legally to a contract, I mean, like as an adult, uh -huh. like without my parents signing. Um, no, it wasn't hard for me. It was actually a long time coming. I mean, there was a lot of dynamics, not just with, because again, we were kids. So it's the, yeah. the issues and the, some of the unhealthy stuff that was there. Um, I can't even like blame the four of us because we were kids yeah. and you can only have so much wisdom and insight at that time. But there mm -hmm. was, there was really a lot of unhealthy dynamics, uh, within like the team that was basically around us. Um, yeah. and I was really unhappy, not unhappy with the girls. Cause I, I still love them dearly. And, um, you know, they were my, my sisters, you know, but yeah. it was, very unhealthy for me mm -hmm. and i got to a place and i remember um and i'm sure when you talk to ashley if you bring it up or whatever uh, <laughs> she'll tell you about the first time i was like i think i'm out i think i'm quitting i think i'm done yeah. with this um i was willing to it was more worth it to me to live in a in a to not be held back to not mm -hmm. be um, you know, gaslit or told, you know, these are your strengths, these are your weaknesses, and this is what you can and can't do. There's a lot of stuff there. And I was unhappy, really. Yeah. And um, there was a lot of dysfunction. And yeah, for me, it was like, I would rather start over and do this mm -hmm. right than um, I've never been one to compromise, compromise for the sake of, like, fame money power opportunity yeah. uh in a lot of ways i think i've sabotaged myself um because of kind of the fear of of what that's kind of like because mm -hmm. yeah it, there yeah, was all the good stuff and there was also a lot of stuff that was very impactful negative no, definitely. Me too. <laughs> but you know you went solo and i know you know love don't cost a thing yeah was a huge it's still a cult favorite <laughs> to this day to a lot i mean it's played <laughs> all over you're That's one of the so main fun. characters yeah like <laughs> how was it because there was an all-star cast like that it was a dope movie it was just a fun movie like were yeah. you nervous to get i know you already did like you said you did theater you've done yeah. stuff before yeah. but how was it that being like your first project out and it was a major motion picture it wasn't like independent that was out yeah. to the masses i had to really fight for that role I'll tell you Did that. You? I actually almost didn't get it. It was going to go to another actress. I don't remember her name, but because um, I bombed my last audition. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but I had a really great manager. Um, 
in, in regards to on the business side, I had a great mm -hmm. manager um, who basically did what he needed to do in order to get me a, a, a second, essentially another meeting with the director so I could like redeem myself for that role. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, I had actually, you know, uh, I had worked with Nick Cannon uh, on for the This Is Me music video. He was... Uh -huh. He was in the music video, so mm -hmm. it was it was interesting auditioning with him in the room. That was actually one that I didn't bomb. Not when I actually did a good job. <laughs> I got a call back, but um, yeah, it, I think there was even a feeling of that. Of even though I didn't know Nick Cannon, like we weren't like best buds or anything like that. I think it was also just that sort of child, sort of oh, I know him. You know, we did yeah. this music video together, so that made me feel more comfortable in the room because mm -hmm. I felt like I had a friend. <laughs> Um, yeah, I met uh, Nicole Galicia, um, who's still to this day one of my my best friends. Um, she played the other friend, uh, other friend Yvonne. Yeah. yeah, and I just love Nicole dearly. She is so funny um, and so talented and so gorgeous and just so many amazing things. But um, yeah, I think that as much as I enjoyed filming the movie mm -hmm. and uh, and doing that, I really. Uh, more than anything, value the friendship that. That's dope. Like, yeah, that's dope. You got some friendships out of it. Yeah, because yeah. I feel like that's rare, especially you know in the industry. But you know, like yeah. as well in that time, you got to experience all the, you know, like I said before, social media. You got to go mm -hmm. to the exclusive parties and award show after parties, and mm -hmm. you know the exclusive stuff in the Hollywood Hills, and mm -hmm. you know where no one knows you had to be there. If you weren't a plus one of someone that was in, or if you weren't that person to yeah. get yourself in, you didn't know. They're kind of like unspoken about. What's, what would you say is one of the most fun like parties that wasn't ever publicized, would you say, that you just had like, you were like, dang, this is the life. Like, this is. Parties. Not, um, even, not so much a party, just right. even a get together. Cause they're, they're not even officially parties, I guess. Gosh, uh, Ashley's probably going to have better answers than me when it comes to this. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. Like, uh, I thought, okay, um, one of them, it's not really a party, but getting to be in the gifting suite, like, yeah. at the Grammy, since we were presenters, this is actually a, a really funny story. Um, but nobody told us. We didn't know what the gifting suite was. We'd never been in a gifting suite. Mm -hmm. We thought people were trying to sell us, like, Rolexes <laughs> and, like, all these, like, expensive items. And I'm not kidding you. We said, no, thank you. Because <laughs> you were thinking, you didn't know it was just free, all the sponsors. You didn't know that they were just giving us this, these products. We're like, oh, no, no, thank you. And then the people, like, I think our label on, like, people were, they were taking, they took it. They weren't going to tell us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> one of them was a Rolex. You'll have to ask Ashley, but I swear they tried. I was like, how much is that? And they were like, you know, X amount of dollars. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> but I think that like that was pretty cool. And the fact that um, even like when you're loading into an award show and mm -hmm. being in the, in the limo and you have all these other artists that you know, that, that you love and just to kind of be in that sort of energy yeah. of it and seeing people arrive and then um, greeting people. It was, yeah, it was, I would say like that kind of stuff. But in regards to like, like parties, like bougie parties, we got, I didn't really get a taste of that until I was a little older. <laughs> older? Okay. <laughs> what, yeah. what would you say is one of the best, because you got to go to all the award shows too. Which yeah. one, like, did you fan out because you've seen someone? And what was just one of your favorite overall? Because, I mean, that's when the award shows were priceless. Because yes. award shows are good today, but they're not nothing compared to, like, the one-of-a-kind performances. And right. before you had every A-lister going, now it's, like, maybe one A-lister and tons of people you don't know, I feel, anymore. Right. <laughs> Um, Unfortunately. I, mean, I would say the VMAs that we that we presented at that was pretty cool because we did that with Mandy Moore and Jessica Simpson and we presented the award to NSYNC. Um that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, we went to a lot of them. I, I remember liking the live ones more than the tapes. The tape yeah. for me felt like a slow death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially as a teen, you're like, what? yeah, you're like, like oh yeah, we don't you don't see. The, you know, us, the public, don't see. And we're thinking, oh, it's all great. And it's like, 
you've literally been in there for like six hours. 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 Because it's, it's a taping, so it's yeah. like that. Um, and that's not including makeup and wardrobe beforehand, and then actually, right. it's, a, it's a lot. Yeah. But, you know, I know you did Love No Cost of Thing, and I know you did two other movies, what was it, The Hollow, and then mm -hmm. Silent Scream you did. I did Silent Scream, I did The Hollow, I, I never, like, it's so funny because I, I, it takes me a time to think about it because I don't sit and think about it. <laughs> you know, like all these things that I've done. Um, I did other stuff. I did a made for TV movie called Anna's Dream, was actually my uh -huh. first job that I got after leaving. Okay. Through. Um, and then I think Love Don't Cost a Thing followed. Um, I'm blinking. I have to go I don't remember. Yeah. Um, but, but how was it like, like when, when you broke away from the group, you wanted to go solo. Did you want to like intertwine acting and music at the same time, or did it kind of just whatever kind of came first? It's a very, 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 very long story, and I'm actually That's... writing a book about it right now because okay, I've been reflecting a lot on just like my life. Is it kind uh -huh. of a very bizarre, a very bizarre life experience? Um, you know, being in the being not in the spotlight to be in the spotlight to not be in the spotlight, and it's just like mm -hmm. woo, it feels like whiplash a bit sometimes. But, um, so when I left the group, I had to make an agreement to not actually pursue solo music. Oh, really? Yeah, that was uh, basically was like, and I wasn't allowed to say, use my name, Melissa Schumann from Dream, that was in the contract. What? There was a lot of like, yeah, restriction. Well, yeah, because that's when labels all had the power. They it was a production company, and that's yeah, the thing, but they were very, very adamant about me not doing a solo career because that would have been a great time to launch it. Yeah, um, but I honestly, at that point, didn't want. I was so turned off, honestly, by my experience um, that I didn't want to pursue solo music at that time i was like yeah. you know what i'd rather at least start doing acting again i love acting I, it's just another avenue of performing for me so um so that's really what my um what what my eye was set on was mm -hmm. acting stuff so um i signed with uh, writers and artists um when i was yeah, about 18. um randy phillips was our manager at the time Okay. I don't know if you know who Randy Phillips is, uh -huh. but Randy yeah. is the one who actually arranged um, the meetings with like writers and artists, and um, there's a couple other big ones, but I, I went with writers and artists because I just fell in love so quickly. <laughs> so young. Um, I just I just loved the team over there, and I loved the the head of the agency, Norman Elijah, at the time. So I was just like, yeah, that's where I want to be. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I I didn't start to really pursue music again. Um, I felt like I didn't, I, I just hadn't, I don't know, like, it wasn't until after my trauma, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, uh, I, I think it's because I felt probably the cathartic needing to write. Yeah. Called up my manager and I was like, I want to do music, I've got things to say. <laughs> I've got lots of things to say. And um, and then that's when I started to kind of start, you know, dabble. But it wasn't like a full-blown, like, here's the plan. This is yeah. what we're going to do. You just wanted to start and kind of I just wanted whatever. to start writing, honestly, because I yeah. kind of needed to, I think, mm -hmm. the therapy of it. Um, and, yeah. Um, and then, yeah. So... And then there was stuff that happened after that that yeah. was less than savory for me. So, yeah. So I don't know yeah. if that answers your question. Well, no, I want to ask you too, like, because at that time, that's when, you know, you like you said, you really didn't have a say so in a lot of things. Mm -mm. It was kind of like you either do this or you're out. Like, right. especially you, you know, females, they want to make you the sexy symbol. You know, they want you in, you know, midriffs and you know, Daisy yeah. Dukes and. Like, yeah. was it told a lot at that time? Like, hey, we want you to look like this. Like, was it, is there a lot of truth to that? Because I feel like some people say yes, depending on who their management or, like you said, label or, you know, who was kind of in charge of them. But, right. you know, but a lot of people say there was a lot of that. It wasn't spoken it. about. Yeah. I mean, Holly was the singer. That's what we were told. It's like, she's the lead singer. And 
nothing was going to change that. That was her lane. My lane was to basically be the sort of Britney Spears sort of member or whatever that means. So lots of midriffs. I mean, it's what was popular at the time. So yeah. that was my role, you know, and then I was known for the one that couldn't sing. And then that got, that really got to me in my head because I mean, my entire life, I was doing musical theater, like belting, like big yeah. songs, like big show tunes. And uh, to have it essentially ingrained in my head or other people, or maybe it was me like adopting and allowing that label or whatever. Cause it, uh, and then it got really crazy for me because then it, I'd become so self-conscious when I sang. Yeah. I sounded like, because I wasn't even really in my kind of outside of your bo body. You're just kind mm -hmm. of so scared. I don't know. But um, yeah, so Ashley was like the edgy sort of attitude-y, you know, uh, you know, I'll be interested to hear how she described herself in the group. And Diana was <laughs> the dancer. So yeah, those were our roles. Yeah, and they yeah. just labeled it all. Yeah, see, that's the unfortunate thing. Like, because you don't know that because you know, it's different from now, where now I feel you would know in a heartbeat because, you know, social media, it's a blessing and a curse. It would be a, yeah. a blessing for those things. It's mm -hmm. a curse for a lot of other things. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but I know, like, you know, once Dream took a break and you were already doing solo stuff and you kind of, you know, stepped away from the limelight, when you, mm -hmm. when you came back to do Lady Phoenix, I know, mm -hmm. how was that just being kind of on your own and, you know, just making it back out in the industry because, well, how many years was that from Dream and like your like your acting? That was what a couple, maybe four or five years. Let me think because the last uh, showcase I ever did by myself mm -hmm. was February two thousand and five. That was okay. the last showcase I ever did as a solo artist. Yeah, okay. Uh, and now looking back, I understand why it is that I stopped. Um. Cause that was traumatic. Um, yeah. So, so it was, I want to say 2005, like right? my husband and I got married in 2006. Six. Okay. Yeah. And then I want to say Lady Phoenix was 2008, 2010 or okay. 2007, 2009. So it was like two years there. Two years. Um, because I think, were we in the group when, Elon was born. I can't remember, but that's how I can kind of remember. Kind of <laughs> put, put it together. Yeah. <laughs> Before but, Elon or after Elon. So, yeah. But yeah, how, how was it just getting back together and like, you know, these are back. I mean, yeah, minus Holly wasn't it, but it was most, it was three of the four of you. So. Yeah. Like, and we actually invited Holly to be a part of it. She mm -hmm. didn't want to at the time. Plus she was living in the Bay area and she still is, I believe living in the, in the Bay area. So just even like locale. She yeah. Could. Um, but yeah, no, that, I think that was, that was really good. It was fun to play with that kind of a different direction and genre. Um, I must've been gosh, about 22, 21, 22 when Lady mm -hmm. Phoenix first kind of started. Um, and yeah, that was good. We got to write a lot. Um, we got to do a lot of the, the same sort of label meetings. Yeah. Um, there's certain people that we met back in the day that now with some of the stuff that's come out over the last couple of years, I'm uh -huh. like, oh, that now that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I didn't like that guy. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, one time I went to, in fact, I, won't, I don't even know his name, but he was a big label guy, and uh -huh. I was pregnant. I was felt, I was very pregnant. I had to be uh -huh. about six months pregnant. And uh, when you're dealing with men who are very powerful, do you really want to sign a girl group with one pregnant? Like, as far yeah. as, like, the way you're going to pitch them or sell them? Mm-hmm. Not quite like, the pussycat dolls. <laughs> yeah, because at, you know? at that time, that was, like, frowned upon, I felt. Like, where now, anyone could be pregnant. And, and look at Cardi B. She was... Oh, yeah. Like, oh, there was a total stigma. Oh, yeah, total 100%. Stigma. Yeah. yeah, and I was 25. When I, so, there, I've made a lot of choices <laughs> that, like, you know, someone would argue, like, 
know, you're 25, you know, you can have this career and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, no, I want to be a mom. <laughs> I don't care. This is you're me. I can be pregnant and sing. What's wrong with that? Well, the, the men that you have to sell this to are not really into that look. <laughs> um, anyways, so, uh, so yes, that was kind of Lady Phoenix. And then uh -huh. um, Ashley was actually the one who left Lady Phoenix started to do her own solo stuff mm -hmm. so that was kind of that time period and then well how um, was it too like i know you shot like the reality show how was that having yeah. that film like because that was new to all of you because you yeah. never had like you said maybe like making the video or mtv cribs for one day or two days right. but not literally following you everywhere and getting like down to the nitty-gritty you know yeah um yeah, that was really exciting to have that. I'm so sad it was never picked up, but um, I think it might have been ahead of its time a bit, you know? Yeah, because um, it's before really reality TV, I feel like, popped, popped, where... I mean, we were dealing with, like, real-life stuff as opposed to, yeah. like, I don't know. Stupid it wasn't, stuff. like, a Jersey Shore or, like... Yeah, um, it was real-life situations, real... Yeah, yeah. It, it was... It was dealing with like really depressing and difficult circumstances mm -hmm. and uh really being us being vulnerable and like this is what our life has been like after you dream and what it was and it yeah. was less than flattering i mean as far as like diana working in the tanning salon we all had to do what we had to like to survive it was it yeah. was tough so i wish that they would have picked that up because there was a lot of material there but um mm -hmm. No, definitely. And to show people, like, the real, you know, it's not just all glitz and glamour. The hunt, You know, everyone thinks, oh, you're on TV. It's right. the best. Life. I'm like, no, it's not. Like, I'm not saying even to myself, but I know a lot of people. And yeah. they're like, no, it's not that great. Like, it's 95% business and 5% glitz and glam and living the life. And it's maybe even, even if it's 5%. Yeah, it's I just... think it's just like anything. It's programming at that time for reality TV. Most people, most networks, most... Anybody who wants to invest, they typically don't like to take risks. So it's yeah. uh, it's like, okay, what has worked? Let's somehow do the same thing or something so close to it that we know that, you know, it's going to be popular. You know, and at that exactly. time, it was, you know, the simple life. It was the things that made you laugh, not cry. <laughs> I mean, yeah. ours would make you laugh and cry. But cry, yeah. yeah, it wasn't, that wasn't really the temperature of reality TV, I feel like, as far as the majority at the time. Yeah, no, definitely. Well, you know, I know you rejoined then. Holly got back on board. Mm -hmm. Like, what was that call? Like, what was the the decision really? What when was it? Because I know you yeah. all toured. What was it? Two thousand sixteen. Two thousand sixteen. Yeah, or yeah. It was for the My Two K tour. Because that's when I interviewed you all. Yeah. Stage in Chicago. Yeah. But um, how was it just reunite? Because I know, like, I think the first performance you did was for. Perez Hilton, I think one of his, like, acoustic Yeah, we did that not. at the end, actually. Of, uh, was it at the end? Okay. You did another, though, performance before. I think it was acoustic. Perez? I forget what it was on. I think these were outside I think somewhere. Just, I think, I don't know if it went viral, but I think that some media outlets picked up on it. We just, yeah. it was just a YouTube video or Yeah, like, I think video. that's what it was. Yeah. It but was how, so how was it just, you know, because that tour was, that, that, it was awesome because it was so nostalgic. It was all the bands I grew up and, you know, yeah. singers I knew. Just how was the whole experience? And, but that's really the first time I feel at that time that, because I feel like back in those days, there weren't meet and greets for actual right. fans. It was meet what and greets that? for like labels and friends of the label and, right. you know, industry people. A meet and greet didn't really happen. It yeah, was, we did back in the day. It was more signings. Like I remember they just yeah. And again, I don't remember even how it worked because I was a child. So it was yeah. just like they just like go over here and sign some go. autographs, and I'm like, okay. okay. You know, <laughs> like you know, but there were meet and greets. I don't think they cost anything though. Yeah, it was just like a quick autograph and you go. Like I remember, it was never yeah, like a picture, pictures. And then yeah, yeah. So yeah, so when um, the My 2K tour came around, well, the girls and I had gotten together around Ashley's 30th birthday. Okay. It was the first time all of us had been together in years. So we flew up to San Francisco, it was the four of us, 
we sang a little bit together. That's where we recorded the stuff and then released mm -hmm. it and, and, and whatever. But really, I think it was at that point we decided that we wanted to do something together again. Um, so we were really trying to figure out, okay, what, what are we able to do given again, the distance with Holly? Yeah. Um, and then, um, we were thinking maybe a Christmas record and, um, we were just kind of just, just. To Jeff Timmons from 98 degrees at some hotel and like at a lunch or something in LA. And I think he was there with Eric from O Town or something. I don't know. This was this was Diana called me. She's like, Oh my god, you wouldn't believe he's here. <laughs> and they mentioned the My 2K tour or that they were putting him together a tour or something. So then the production company, um, faculty productions, um, reached out to me because I was essentially managing the group. We didn't have anybody else uh, mm. involved. It was just the four yeah. of us. And um which is better I feel in a way. Yeah, it was it was better. Um I was a bit disappointed with the lack of follow through after that and frustrated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it felt a lot of things after that. <laughs> um because we all put in a lot of hard work but yeah like a lot of people don't realize but it was my husband and me that put together and like hired the people like I found the tour the, the tour manager the bus I had no experience doing any of this we didn't have yeah. any of the original tracks so we had to hire a producer to build the tracks up from scratch all of them that you heard in the, in the show we had to redo all of our vocals as far as like backing vocals and that sort mm -hmm. of stuff um uh the costumes uh the, the the vip stuff which i i had no idea like you said that was so new i'm like what is yeah. this i remember calling eric from motown being like who do you guys use like what is this <laughs> um and uh yeah it was just very very foreign so uh yeah we did the tour and i had so much fun i had so so much fun i i mean i I remember and my son was on the road the entire time. Uh -huh. My husband was on it for about half. Oh, and my husband creative directed and, and did the choreography for all of it. Oh, that's, yeah, so, I figure. Uh, yeah, that, that's for awesome. Free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for free. <laughs> um, so, uh, anyways, uh, yeah, no, we had a lot of fun. My son, my my family fared very well on the road. We adapted, yeah. and it's probably because my husband, being a dancer, being on the road was very normal and natural for him. Yeah, he's used and to it. And yeah. for me, it felt like an old shoe, no big deal. I'm actually quite low maintenance. So <laughs> like, I'll throw on like just a t-shirt and jeans yeah. and on the bus. Like <laughs> the lifestyle wasn't all that, you know, hard for me. But there were other couples on the road that did have a harder time and it was mm. hard to adapt. So I completely understand. Th that that being a very large uh, reason for uh, it just not being something that we could move forward with after no, this well, the agreement. Yeah. Well, how was how did your son like it? Because that's like the first time he got to see mommy back. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like he was old enough to know. It's not like he was a baby. He was old yeah, enough to be like he was six. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's not like he was old enough to be like, no, that's my mom on stage. Like, what did he think? Just. Yeah, I mean, like, he's still, I, I'm grateful for it because it's not something that we discuss in the house. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, look at mommy's script. Like, <laughs> that just doesn't, you know. So it's nice that it's kind of an organic thing where he just goes, oh, yeah, my mom's a singer. My mom's an actor. This is what my mom does. Like, and it's yeah. because he's been around it and seen it and all that. Um, but, yeah, looking back on that, a lot of people don't realize, like, like when my husband wasn't on the road, cause there was a point he's a dancer on lip sync battle. Uh -huh. So he was, he had to leave for like three or four weeks or something and to go film lip sync battle. And we were on the road. So it was just me and Elin. There were times and I'm sure if anybody was watching this or was there, you probably saw my son on a stool on the side of the stage. Cause that's where mommy needed him to sit. So I could keep an eye on him. It was so, um, it was definitely it was a very interesting way of like having to juggle both 
yeah. without like there was I didn't have a nanny like there was there was no there was no help yeah. um, but it was fu it's fun to look back on that and go oh my gosh look at that like yeah <laughs> what no women definitely have to do, you know so and, and I feel like too I feel like that could happen again uh, down the road mm -hmm. like you said it may not have might happen really quick mm -hmm. kind of like how the Spice Girls did you know sure. they yeah absolutely. every so many years you you know, you go on the road for the fans, make them happy, yeah. and then, you know, take a break again. And, yeah. you know, every summer, and these are all so young still. It's not like, right. you know, where it's like some artists, like, you're like in their 60s, and it's like, well, you better tour now because <laughs> there's not going to be, you know, at least not with dance moves. Um, right. But but I know you released as well Stereotyped mm -hmm. in 2019, but that was all recorded yeah. a while ago. What, like, Long. Like that was the stuff that I started writing between 2003, 2005. Yeah. So like how was that? Working with, yeah. Yeah. And it's how not was mastered it or anything like that. But, mm -hmm. that but how was it just to get it out? Because I'm sure, you know, anytime you're writing stuff and recording mm -hmm. stuff, you want, you want to release it. And like at those times with labels and stuff, right. you, you can't. It's a big... No, sorry, it's in the vault until right. something's figured out or it's, it's never listened to. Right. Yeah, I, I was, I'm, I'm thrilled to just have kind of just like exercise that out and kind of, um, you know, I finally saw the light of day. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I would love to do, I would, I've never really had the opportunity to really discover myself as a recording artist like separately without mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people's direction and input um and i would love to do that one day to be able to um to to really kind of discover that because i i love stereotype i think it was it was you know cathartic for me in a lot of ways but mm -hmm. um but even so i feel like it doesn't necessarily represent like me i don't know if that makes sense no i agree because it was a different time a album. <laughs> yeah well and because it was at a different time in your life and yeah it came out almost what 10 years late, close to 10 years later so yeah. it's a whole different yeah i mean everything Before i mean it's just time yeah time. I mean, we all grow and change so yeah. it's understandable yeah but you know in this day and age um you know music is so different the industry is it's almost like frowned upon to be signed to a label today unless right. it's like, uh, it's crazy because back in that day if you didn't have a label you didn't have distribution and right nothing you had nothing like that yeah. was you know you had the artist development and yep. you know they whipped you in shape to <laughs> kind of mold you like i said even though the money may not be great the exposure was there oh yeah like, for sure yeah, yeah it's absolutely. like crazy mm -hmm. but like what's your take on just the music industry now like what do you think about it because i I don't know. I miss the old days, but sure. I understand why we're in these times because people weren't making money necessarily in those days. Some people were, yeah. but a lot of people weren't. A lot. A lot of them. Yeah. Um, I don't know much about the music industry these days, honestly. Um, I like a, a lot of the artists that are coming out. I mean, I mm -hmm. like Harry Styles stuff that, that he yeah. dropped. I was last year late to the game, but... Dua Lipa, I really like. Um, okay. There's there's artists out there that I, I I like their stuff that's coming out, but it like in regards to it being, it just feels like a completely different world, you know. Yeah. I, I honestly don't really know how to relate to it in many ways. I, I feel the same way. That's how I like. It, it's just weird because like I yeah. felt like at that time, every time I came home from school, I was watch TRL and like 106 and Park. Right. Where now it's they they're like performing on instagram and it's like right there's it, really no centralized it's it is i i agree it back in the day music and and what the artists were like it was it was part of your life like yeah as a kid like to be able to it's it was like tgif on a friday you know what I'm exactly. like it's what you did on friday yeah it's school it was the thing you looked forward to like once the bell rang you know you exactly and escape and, i was yeah, for sam so. booty or coconuts and buy my yep. single cassettes for 99 cents or 49 yeah. cents like yeah. kids don't 
know that today. Like, I don't know, it's just weird. Like, I remember buying the He Loves You Not single. It was like the, the four squares, I remember. Yeah. Like, yep, yep, yep. I don't know, I guess it, it's just so different now. And so different. I don't know. Yeah, but like, you know, this time is so different now, like you were saying with behind the scenes stuff. What's something you would tell, especially females? Because I feel like, yes, it happens to males, but mm -hmm. females, especially in those times, you kind of kept quiet and that was it. Cause especially because there were so many men in power, you know, it was, mm -hmm. it's just how it was and kind of like, it was almost known. It wasn't like it was a secret. It just, it was kept under the rug and yeah. you just dealt with it, unfortunately, at that time, I feel. Yeah. A lot yeah. of people did to make sure you stood, your career stood up and you were getting auditions and getting yeah. in the rooms of the right people. What's one, um, some words of advice you would give, you know, females at least trying to get in this industry? Oh, good Lord, in the <laughs> music industry. It's a beast. It's <laughs> yeah, it's a beast. Uh, I wish I had, you know, uh, I guess my advice would be given that it's such choppy, choppy waters and such <laughs> a big beast, so many things, so many facets is, uh, I would just say don't compromise yeah. for anybody. Um, stick to your gut. Um, don't, don't let others control your life. That's kind of hard to say, but like, yeah. you know, uh, people have a big hand in like, like every facet of your life. Mm -hmm. Um, when you get that big, um, and that's invasive in and of itself, you know? Um, yeah, I would just say we still have a lot a lot of work to do just like as a society like there's yeah. you know i i hope that one day the music industry can be a safer place for females um but unfortunately it's not and there's been very little change in regards to the power structure and and it's not even just males or powerful males that uphold kind of uh, yeah, a lot of the abuse mm -hmm. and dysfunction and stuff. It's also there's females involved that mm -hmm. that fit into that same sort of uh, uh, culture. I, I guess yeah. they they think it's acceptable and that's just the way that it is, and um, they don't have a problem with the 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 exchange. Yeah, you know, but uh, the exchange will cost you a lot. <laughs> 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 yeah, I could imagine. Like, I can only imagine what, like, like you said, there's so much stuff unheard of and unseen. That's why I kind of wish social media was around because a lot of stuff would be different. Mm -hmm. Well, not not necessarily different, like you said, but at least seen. Yeah. Like you know, because a lot of stuff you know, once it's on social media, forget about it. Everyone knows. Oh yeah, the, the story about it. Yeah. But you know, to wrap up, I want to take all your time. Um, mm -hmm. what does the future hold for you? What do you see? personally solo and what would you wish for dream for future endeavors uh, okay um well i'm actually i live stream about three uh -huh. days a week now i'm on dlive.tv and also twitch um so basically what what i see for myself is i'm really kind of building my own studio like my own okay. broadcasting studio because i'm tired <laughs> of needing other people's yeses in order to create and produce. I feel like I've been so stagnant creatively for so long because I need a green light from somebody else. So mm -hmm. about a year ago, I started live streaming. I'm like, you know what? Just like social media with IG, if I want to go on live and if I want to sing, if I want to dance, if I want to do a sketch, if I want to, <laughs> you know, bring a guest on, like I don't have to get anybody's permission or the green yeah. light to be able to do that. So that is what's in the future for me. I expect some big things with my studio because it's going okay. to happen. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, I would love to do music in the future as well. Um, I kind of see it all intertwined in my live streaming on my channel. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. And then in regards to Dream, um, 
I just want everyone to be happy and healthy. I would love to be able to, you know, do that again. If it, yeah. at any point, I mean, I'll never say never because I said never prior and then the My2K tour happened. So, <laughs> you know, I, I am willing to listen to any opportunities that might come up with that. I have not completely shut the door, but I also acknowledge that our working relationship is like a marriage that keeps divorcing. <laughs> <laughs> so knowing the limitation of kind of like kind of what's built in, like you want to get back with your ex, like again, yeah. like, okay. <laughs> like I don't think I can do it again. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm open. I'm open. I'm, I'm open. You know. Okay. Well, no, I'm, life throws my way at this point. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you skill, like I said, from seeing news back in, you know, 2001, 2002, to seeing news, you know, 2016, yeah. the chemistry's still there. It was all, oh, like, he's never amazing. left. Yeah, like, it was like, like, you literally were together since the whole break. Like, yeah, that never happened. I will say, though, one of the, the things for me that was really, really, really tough was that that part of me, that dream part of me, that persona, whatever that mm -hmm. is, that rooted, um, that part of me was dead for so long because I it was, like, out of use, like, yeah. a tool out of use. That exactly. just doing it, like, even getting into the, the, like, dance studio and stuff like that, it was there was times I would cry to my husband. I was I, there was times I was so angry because <laughs> it was like I had it was like uh, something resurrecting that you loved so 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 much. Yeah, and to rediscover the love for it again was it's like growing like, to love almost again. I feel like, yeah, like falling in love with it again, finding that place inside of me, and then. And then, I, then having to let it die again. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what? I feel like it's a blessing to curse with that. And yeah. just know it could always come back. People's, you know, we Absolutely. change so often. Yeah. But Melissa, I want to thank you so much. I know it says, it says I have 40 seconds. No, 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 but no. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate thank your time. You. I always support y'all individually, oh, together. And, you know, you I can't wait well. to. Yeah, see you in the future. And, you know, stay safe. You too. Stay healthy. You too. Yeah, and <laughs> I'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. Okay, Bye. thanks. I appreciate you. Me. Thanks. Bye.